YouTube. What is good? It's your boy Q from Next Level Reefing, and I'm back with another video. First and foremost, as always, I would like to say thank you for all the love and support. I show do appreciate it. And with that being said, make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash the notification bell so you can be notified of every video that I drop, which is every single Friday. All right, so let's dive into it. All right, so if you guys haven't noticed in last week's video and this video, the tank is fishless. And I promised in last week's video that I was going to let you guys know as to why the tank is fishless. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, and this is your first time coming across my page, first off, welcome. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Smash that notification bell so you can be notified of every video that I drop, which is every single Friday. And also, I added a playlist. So if you go on my main page and you hit the playlist section, I actually have a playlist of episodes one through 15. So it can get you guys caught up on exactly what I'm talking about and will be talking about in this week's episode. So even though my motto is taking my time and doing my research, in this hobby, there's always going to be bad, ugly, worse, whatever you can think of. And I also said that I am no expert. So with all that being said, I am no exception to anything going wrong in this hobby. So if we rewind into the last few weeks, I want to say, let's just go with when I did a tour in some of my LFS's, well, not technically LFS's, but in another city in Charlotte, I bought a couple of fish. So I bought a cleaner wrasse and I bought um, six blue green chromuses. On top of that, I ordered a pair of Bella Gobies on saltwaterfish.com because they had a steal of a deal where basically you were almost paying one for two so i ordered that then on top of that i went back to charlotte and they had a female trigger fish i bought that then in my lfs they had a male trigger fish because i was actually waiting for one of the uh the fish stores in charlotte to get a male trigger fish but when I went to my LFS, they actually had one, so I bought that. So you can see where this is going. I went on a fish frenzy, and you know, if you or if you don't know, that is one thing you are not supposed to do. You're not supposed to ask so many fish at one time. So with that being said, don't know which fish was, but one of those fish brought ick into my tank. <laughs> yep, 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 your boy has or had ick in the dream tank and so with my philosophy especially in the area that i'm in right now being that is a lack of space i was never a big fan or had a possibility of setting up another tank for quarantine so i usually do a fresh water dip and it seemed to be going good thus far and that's the thing with this hobby. I've seen people that have had success without quarantine tanks. I've seen people have success with quarantine tanks. I see people have issues without. I've seen people have issues with. So it, you never know, especially the way that the hobby is growing more and more and, and people are having their own shops. It's a lot. And on top of that, everybody's tank is different. So my tank numbers could be different than your tank numbers and we have the exact same bill with the exact same equipment but everybody's style is different and i'm not gonna lie too I, I was kind of getting full of myself because of the success of the tank and seeing that the corals were growing and the fish were healthy i was kind of getting outside of myself and i and i should have reeled myself back in but when i saw those stores and i was out there and it took two and a half almost three hours to get there i was like man i don't know the next time i'm going to be able to come out here so let me go ahead and take this chance and you know get that but with that being said i took that chance and almost half of my fish died and i'm definitely going to take responsibility for this one because actually i saw it early on but i was so focused on other things that was going on 
that I didn't tackle it in time. So one of the signs that you can see that your fish have parasites is when the tangs or any type of fish start grazing their body on the sand or on the rocks. I saw the orange shorter tang and the powder blue tang doing that and the yellow tang too but not as much i saw mostly with the orange tang the orange tang was really heavily uh, grazing itself on the rocks and the sand and as i said before i didn't really have room for a temporary quarantine tank so i was trying to find methods to treat it while the fish were in the tank and then also i didn't really want to go through all the hassle of trying to catch all those fish that i put in the tank but again, because of me not tackling that issue early on, most, like I said, of the fish stock is gone. And the first fish to go was the orange shoulder tank. So once I saw the orange shoulder tank actually die in the tank, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna stop doing my due diligence and research of trying to cure it while they're in the tank. So I'm gonna try to catch them and just you know, talk to my wife and figure out some way that we can make a temporary quarantine tank. All right, so let me back up because I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself, getting a little bit excited. So those of you that don't know what ick is, ick is a parasite that basically attaches itself on the outside of the fish's body and eats away of its slimy coat and agitates the fish and irritates the fish and stresses it out and goes into its gills until the fish can't fight anymore and dies. It basically looks like that your fish was sprinkled with salt. So it's like little white grains, little white particles that is uh, seen on the outside of your fish. And there's a bunch of different theories, a bunch of different methods as to what's the ending point of the fish once they get to a certain level of ick you know it, it depends it, just like with a person you know if it gets sick some people get more sick than others so it's the same thing with fish but what i do know the biggest signs that you can tell if your fish has ick is like i said earlier if your fish starts grazing the rock or grazing the sand bed or grazing something because it's irritated so it's trying to get that parasite off its body that's how you can tell that your fish has icks because fish don't normally graze themselves on the rock or the sand bed. All right, so now that I got the medical part out of the way, so like I said, my wife and I, we were trying to figure out what we can do because seeing the fish in that state was very, very sad and depressing. So we agreed to set up a 20 gallon long tank in the spare bedroom. And I also bought a five gallon tank because uh, Petco actually had that dollar for gallon promotion going on. So I thought that was pretty dope and because I needed that because I didn't want to spend crazy amounts of money on this temporary tank. And so the main reason why I wanted to set up this tank was because um, when I was doing my, my research, they were saying that once the ick falls off the body of the tank or excuse me, the fish, it takes at least uh, 28 days for the ick to hatch and reattach itself to another fish again i'm just paraphrasing here i'm not sure the exact days but it takes a few weeks for the ick to rehatch and attach itself to another fish and go through that cycle over and over and over and over again until either your fish die or or until your fish dies pretty much so for me personally, I'm not gonna take you guys on this rabbit hole that I went through as far as finding the true definition of how to treat ick and what ick was, uh, because there's different theories and different stories, but there's nothing that's actually uh, sustained uh, documents as to how to treat ick or how to cure it or how to prevent it. It's a whole thing. But what I'm going to tell you what I did was, like I said, I set up the temporary tank and what fish I have left. I'm going to show you a video of that. So this is what I currently have left of the whole ick trabacle. So for me, what I am going to do to try to cure ick from the, the dream tank is I'm going to have the tank fishless for about 28 days. And then I'm going to take an additional 14 days to make sure that the ick is actually completely dead. So 
The reason why I'm going to be doing 28 days is so the research that I looked up is said that it takes at least 20 some odd days for it to hatch and to fall off a fish, sit in the sand bed, hatch, and then try to look for another fish. So with that whole process, it takes at least 20 some odd days. And if it can't find another fish to hatch onto, then it dies. And it takes at least 20 some odd days to die or go through that whole process. So then I'm gonna wait an additional 14 days to make sure that actually goes through the complete process. What I'm also gonna do as well while the tank is fishless is also treated with um ick medication from polyp lab i can't remember the exact name i think it's like polyp lab medic i'm not sure but i'll leave that um, product name in the description below so look out for that if you guys need that um, so i'm going to do that and it basically says you dose um a cup or whatever that spoonful is in the morning or at night. If you think it's more aggressive in your tank, then you can also do it three times uh, within the morning and three times within the night. But I don't think I need to do all that and I don't wanna overdose it. So I'm gonna just do the uh, one spoonful uh, during the morning and one at night. And I'm also going to be doing that in the temporary hospital slash quarantine tank as well on top of copper and the other one is called Prozzi Pro. I'm not sure, but any everything that I'm going to be using for this egg treatment, I'm going to have that description or have that product down in the description below. Now, as you see, this is what I have left of the stock list for, as far as the fish side. So the funny thing is most of the OG triple OGs actually lasted through the whole ick issue. And usually from when I did my research, tangs are the most prone to get ick. And the other 40 story is that with the with Dory, she was on her last leg. Like she was on her side at the bottom of the sand bitch. Actually, when I was uh, trying to fish or catch all the fish she was actually stuck in the middle uh pillar and actually had to take the rock out to get her out of that and when i finally got her out she was looking like she was on her last leg she was completely covered in ick uh but she was like the strongest out of all of them as you see powder blue didn't make it orange shoulder didn't make it the female trigger didn't make it unfortunately again the Magnificent Phosphase didn't make it. Okay, so pretty much all that's left of the stock tank currently from the whole ick issue is uh, Yellow Tang, Scar the Purple Tang, the Blue Hippo Tang, both of the Clownfish, um, two Blue Green Chromis, and the Male Blue Throat Trigger. That's it. Everybody else did not make the cut. So now the question is, is your boy going to keep the hospital tank from here on out? Absolutely. Um, lesson learned on this end. I probably won't do the, keep the 20 gallon long. I'll probably keep the five gallon um, just because of space saving and also learning to not try to have so many fish at once to put in the display tank or to try to buy so many fish up at once. Um, yeah, so I'll keep the five gallon. And also what saved me from balling out of control, everything else I've already had. So I already had the hang on the back filter. I've already had multiple heaters just because like I said, I've been in this hobby for a while. And you know, if you're a true hobbyist, you don't really throw away the stuff that you already have. You usually keep it in a bin or somewhere in some sort of storage. And that's exactly what I did. And fortunate for me, um, it worked out. So. so I hate to give you guys a whole bundle of bad news, but you know, on the end, like I said, with this hobby lesson learned, um, at least it didn't wipe out the whole entire stock list. Um, but yeah, so you live and you learn. We'll move forward. I'll keep you guys posted as to what's going on and what will be going forth. And with that being said, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. And I'll see you on the next one.